On Friday, discussions were held with uh, students and teachers at the Iyerka University regarding the protection of the environment and were taught some of the things that are harmful to the environment. Jen Mutoni has this report. People working in different fields related to the environment. The main topic was how to protect the environment. The director of ULK University says that it is indeed important for students to learn how to better protect the environment as this is a wake-up call for those that do not do so. We must if only people could take it as a personal responsibility and create projects that are environment related as well as discussions among countries, the degrees Celsius of heat would definitely drop hence people living in better environmental conditions. Michelle De Vries, representative of the Green Growth Organization, says that such discussions are part of the solutions for the future. Uh, I think we have an opportunity. I think we have a very small window. Uh, some people would say that window is now closed, but I'm always optimistic. That's why I wanted to come here to speak to the students, because they're going to also discover innovations at the Make, uh, new discoveries, they're going to learn about new processes and new materials that we can use. So I have a lot of uh, hope and faith in the students uh, of the university, but also in terms of youth and the role that they play in climate action. Uh, I've seen some of the youth do incredible things, and a lot of times they underestimate their power. Um, but they do have a lot of power, and the solutions that are going to come up are going to come from them. Thank you so much. Matthew Metza, spokesperson for Climate Clock Africa, says that many countries have a lot to learn from Rwanda as she continues to show progress in environmental protection. We are lost when we are losing all the different animals that we take for, for granted. I mean, in a lot of countries, the only way I can see wild animals, they're not even wild anymore. We have to go into the zoo to see them. You know, here in Rwanda, you have some of the most amazing wildlife. You know, you have unbelievable bird life as well but of course as well everybody knows about the amazing work you're doing for the for the gorillas you know gorillas in a lot of other countries are completely instinct you know um, and if they don't have the right habitat to live in then they're gonna they're gonna die as simply as that and climate crisis is what you know causes like you know, those damages you know and if we lose our greenery we also lose the animals that live within it you know Taking care of the environment has been reiterated as everyone's responsibility to avoid the consequences of not taking care of it, as these effects are felt by everyone. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you very much, Jen, for this report. And as we move ahead to other matters, if nothing is done in the next uh, six years, uh, uh, global warming uh, is going to reach 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, in uh, this regard, many uh, partners, many uh, players are doing all they can to see that uh, mobilization uh, to its best can be done to have uh, the world, to have uh, different countries, to have different partners come together uh, to find uh, solutions to this issue issue that uh, is uh, alarming uh, globally. This is why this evening I'm joined by the spokesperson of uh, uh, Climate Clock Af Africa. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, um, you know, for me, who loves to come to Rwanda, mm. um, and this is one of the reasons why as well, that again, that, you know, it's a pleasure to be here, not because of this course here, which is something that is a little bit, that's very serious, but um, yes, we are here because of, you know, today, officially we're going from seven years down to six years mm. of the time we have left to actually do something unless we're going to be in a final seven situation where we will not be able to repair the damage that we have caused to, to, the, to the climate. All right. As we're talking about this, uh, Mensa and uh, Matthew, how bad is the situation? Uh, talking about climate change and global warming and everything, how bad is the situation to start from this one? I mean, it is so severe that... You know, we find ourselves in a situation where it's not just a few countries, it's we're talking about the whole globe. And that's why as well that you see now that we have much more flooding, we have much more drought, um, and it affects globally, because also like, it's part of what we have as well with the economy. Um, and one of the reasons why as well that we thought it was very important to be here in, in Rwanda on this day, because it's happening all around the world on this day, which is the, officially the um, emergency climate um, day, and the reason why we thought it's very important to be here is because Rwanda has really shown, taking the step and shown like, you know, how things can be done, mm. what you can actually do to be able to combat climate crisis. Mm. And it's, uh, Rwanda is not only a role model for, for Africa, for the rest of the continent, but also for, for Europe and the other countries that's polluting much more than we could ever even think about. And 
you, you see as well, for example, this whole um, with the thing that you, know, you don't have find plastic and so on. In Ghana, where I'm from, now that it's raining season, mm. we are very flooded because there's plastic in the gutters everywhere and it adds to the, the pollution, which again, a part of creating the, the, um, the, the flooding and of course, like you know, the, the issues that we find ourselves with today. All right, uh, we can say our backs are against the wall yes. and uh, the clock is not stopping, it's moving mm -hmm. and uh, the time is very little. Uh, what exactly needs to be done and what are these um, necessary and important steps mm -hmm. that need to be taken by different countries and different players uh, towards achieving this uh, that we're talking about, uh, towards uh, curbing down this issue of global warming? I think, you know, what the, the important part is to ensure that you put the right policies in place. And not only have the right policies, but also have the people buying into those ideas and that vision that's coming out from government. And that's why as well, what it, what it needs is very strong, very good leadership. And again, you know, Rwanda is, is a role model. You know, the, the leadership that, that's within this country is part of ensuring that Rwanda is so far ahead when it comes to fighting climate crisis. You know, for example, as well, like, you no, know, it's, it's, it's a, it's not a secret that if we don't have a good climate, it's going to affect agriculture, it's going to affect our nature mm. and the whole ecosystem. You know, a country like you know, Rwanda that is so blessed with the most beautiful nature that you can imagine mm. and also amazing uh, white, uh, wildlife, you have some of the most amazing uh, bird lives as well like you know, here. And of course, everybody knows the, the, the story about the, the gorillas, you know, mm. which is uh, something that a lot of countries cannot even show anymore. We don't even have gorillas in a lot of countries. But those things will be taken away, not because of due to, to anyone's fault here in Rwanda, but just because of the climate. Mm. So it's important that everybody else are chipping in and doing their part. And that's why as well that it's important that we all understand what we can do, each of us. You know, and, and that's why as well today when we were at, uh, doing this event at um, the Kigali Independent University, which was absolutely fantastic. I mean, the students there were so informed and they were so passionate about it. And we had a whole auditorium that was full mm. to bring. And again, shows like you know, the passion and the importance of this for, for young people to take part of, of this. And one of the key things as well is that what can we do individually? Mm. And this as well, like you know, sometimes when we charge the mobile phones and we pull it out, turn off the appliances, turn off the lights when you're leaving the room, all these different things. And of course, for us who don't live in Rwanda, where you guys, you got it, you know what I mean? But for us that live in the other countries, don't throw litter around, mm. you know, don't, put, don't use plastic, you know? All these different things is something that takes into consideration. As, as, as we head to, 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 towards the conclusion, absolutely, uh, you, you started mentioning about it. Global warming is a, a collective issue, and uh, not only one country can play their role and others uh, do not. Uh, the problem is going to continue on the rise. What do you say about uh, the partnership between countries actually all over the globe? Mm -hmm. And uh, how can we really enhance this partnership and collaboration between countries so as to uh, make it joint efforts to fight this issue? You know, um, this is a very good question. And one of these things as well that plays a big part is, of course, our tourism as well. I mean, especially, you know, a lot of countries across the continent, tourism is a very big part, um, agriculture and all these different parts that, that plays into the relationship we have with other countries. So, for example, for me, I mean, I didn't start uh, coming to, um, to Rwanda and experience this absolutely amazing country if it hadn't been for, from, for Bonita uh, Manovi that doing um, Sister Wanto has um, Uber Luxury Travels, a safari. And, and from there on, you experience, you know, like you know, what can be done and what can we take from, from what you're doing here and then apply it in other countries as well. So right. The partnerships across the continent is absolutely important. And the same thing as well with now with Africa Wildlife Foundation, as you, as you have here, mm. the country director, um, Belize Carissa, is doing such amazing work and the whole team. And they are part of setting a stepping stone where we others have to reach mm. to be able to ensure that we have this amazing wildlife that we can enjoy across the continent. All right. And uh, finally, are you optimistic that we will have to play against time and we'll achieve what we want? You know, I must tell you that, you know, we are really up against it, you know. Um, there's no sugarcoating this, you know, and we. It means that everybody has to make a st strong effort, and also it is from from the top down, from leadership down to everybody on ground have to be part of it for us to succeed. All right, uh, Matthew Mensa, the spokesperson of, uh, uh, of of Climate Clock Africa. Thank you very much for Thank giving you so much us for some on the television. Thank yes. You.